As the name suggests, dryland systems are areas or regions characterized by a lack of water. They include cultivated lands, scrublands, shrublands, grasslands, savannas, semi-deserts, and true deserts. The dryness of the land renders the area difficult to cultivate. Formally, the definition encompasses all land areas where the climate is classified as subhumid, semi-arid, arid, or hyper-arid. This classification is based on the aridity index values, which define as the long-term mean of the ratio of an area's mean annual precipitation to its mean annual potential evapotranspiration. Dryland areas cover about 41% of Earth's land surface and are inhabited by more than 2 billion people, about one-third of the world's population. Dryland systems lead to desertification, which is defined by the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification as land degradation in arid, semi-arid, and dry subhuman regions resulted from various factors, including climate variations and human activities. People living in dryland systems, on average, lag far behind the rest of the world on human well-being and development index. The current social economic condition of dryland peoples, about 90% of whom are in developing countries, lag significantly behind that of people in other areas. Existing water shortages in drylands are projected to increase over time due to population increase, land cover change, and global climate change. Let's go to Rajasthan, India to find out the social ecological changes happening in small villages like Kandai and Adapanath. Desertification is a major problem in the drylands of India, affecting 173.64 million hectares or 53% of the total area and about 177 million people. The problem is more severe in the arid lands of the northwestern part of the country, especially in the Thar Desert regions of Rajasthan, which is the largest state of the Republic of India in terms of area. As you can see from the picture, Rajasthan has little forest cover. Approximately 92% of the area in Rajasthan is currently affected by desertification, with about 76% from wind erosion, 13% by water erosion, and another 4% of area is affected by water logging and salinity slash alkalinity. Water erosion and salinity seriously affect agriculture, aggravating poverty, and threatening the food and water security in the area. Rajasthan is defined by its landscape. Its culture, music, and architecture is the reflection of the Thar Desert in which it resides. The lack of color is visible in their vibrant paintings, clothes, and music. The lack of water is reflected in their artistry of water pots, pans, and jugs on which their survival depends. Water spawns an entire industry and culture in Rajasthan. The indigenous and traditional knowledge on rainwater harvesting, groundwater use, and step wells are legendary in Rajasthan. The self-help group is an effective method on many levels and especially valuable in changing social cultural attitudes and behaviors. The concept of SHG enables the marginalized people to create funds through microfinancing and support themselves, including leaving to them the decision about how this is best achieved. Essentially, it helps them take charge of their community's life. The origin of self-help groups can be traced back to the Guamin village on the bank of Bangladesh founded by Muhammad Yunus in 1975. In India, the National Bank of Agriculture and Rural Development initiated the program in 1986 to 1987. I am going to talk about the concept of self-help groups or SHGs which has transformed the villages of Rajasthan. SHG is an integrated and multidisciplinary program of microfinancing that leads to self-employment, organization of the rural poor and their capacity building, thereby making them self-sufficient. Its focus is on activity clusters based on the resources and the occupational skills of the people and the availability of markets. To understand the dry land system and the success of self-help groups, a case study of two villages, Kandai and Adapanath, which were located east of Udipur, illustrates the issues, impacts, and solutions. The climate here is characterized by hot summer with highest day temperature between 29 degrees Celsius and 42 degrees Celsius. Winter months are much cooler with an average of 16 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. 
The village of Kandai is located in Valonaga of the Udaipur district, Rajasthan, with 185 households and a population of 830 people. Adipanath has 66 households with a population of 450 people, according to the population census of 2011. The villagers are mostly local indigenous tribal groups such as the Rawat, Mina, Danjis, and Gayaris that have been highly marginalized and struggling for generations with high levels of poverty. Bonded labor used to be very common because of the high interest rates for borrowing money. As a result, the farmers were indebted to the landlords since generations. However, with the creation of self-help groups in Rajasthan, the situation is improving in these villages. As I traveled to Kandai, I could not help but notice a pop of green emerging from the bare and stark brown landscape. The contrast is striking and presents a successful example of the locals' initiative to transform the lives of the villagers and their landscape. Indira is a 19-year-old young lady who lives with her parents and siblings in Kandai village. Her father, who has no formal education, is the village weatherman. He uses traditional knowledge and his experience to predict daily weather which is very important for the villagers who are mostly farmers. From an early age he saw that Indira's interest and knowledge about the local weather. She learnt about the moisture in the air, wind direction, frost, and the rain from her father. As she grew older she wanted to create a meteorological station for more accurate predictions. With the help of her local NGO, Sayong Sathan, the village got set up with a rain gauge, thermometer, anemeter, and a barometer. Indira started to record data every morning and evening. Now she can accurately predict rain, frost, and strong winds in order to prepare the farmers to take care of their crops. Now Indira has taken over from her father as the new weather woman. Kandai has also transformed itself through investment in better seeds, water management system using wells, storage tanks, and drip irrigation. They have also increased their livestock capacity through better management systems. This is the source owned by these 12 families. Earlier you can see the radius of this whale was like this. You can see the, the fuel, you know, and then it was renovated. As I approach Adipanath, I notice a similarity I found in Kandai village. A pop of green emerging from a mist bare and brown landscape. I also notice bun walls or retaining walls as I approach the village. I am told it helps protect them from flash floods and sandstorms. Adipanath is hilly and uneven. The residents are mostly small-scale farmers and take care of animals. With the help of Sayong Sathan, the women have taken a lead in transforming their village. The village bank has funded the traditional rainwater harvesting, wells and better houses, breaking the vicious cycle of being trapped by money lenders. The rainwater harvesting through water retention ponds have been very successful in this dry village. The farmers grow crops like maize, sorghum, pulses, wheat, and barley. They are also growing vegetables and moving towards organic farming. The transformation of these villages in Rajasthan is the testimony of a partnership of mostly women, working to transform their communities and environment.